Well, cool. Well, it's great to meet you. And I want to begin our conversation with living through a pandemic the last three and a half years. How did you get through it and how did it change you? Yeah, so I was actually um, working in healthcare during the pandemic. So um, not as a practitioner, but in administration, I was the chief administrative officer of a healthcare company. So you can imagine the the time for me was really 24 seven about trying to take care of our coworkers and trying to figure out how do we um, help our nurses and, and physicians that were working around the clock. Um, so that was, that was, um, that was a pretty impactful time. I'll tell you the thing that changed me or that impacted me most being both on the personal side and on the business side of it was a real awareness of the health discrepancies. Um, I think that, you know, I've been um, a person that's by all circumstances more privileged and did not really have that kind of understanding of how many people were on the margins and how many people were not able to get the care that they needed. Um, and it and it really changed my worldview in terms of um, how to just be more aware and more helpful to to others and and specifically those that um, are finding themselves poor and underserved. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I've heard from a lot of people that worked in that industry was that, there was so many discrepancies. There was such an overworked, overtaxed thing. You see humanity in a whole different way. I mean, I remember when I got, I got, I cut my hand really bad and had to get stitches. And it was probably April or May. And my wife was freaking out. You know, you're going to a hospital. I'm like, this is going to be the safest place to go to. And I remember I got a really hardcore ER doc that was getting ready to climb Machu Picchu and had a, he couldn't go on the trip, but I was just like, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. Because we were all trying to figure it out, trying to turn the flashlight on in, in a dark room. And he said, basically, it's going to be the elderly and those that are really not in good health that are going to really be ravaged by this. But people that are younger, people that are in shape, that, you know, that that it's it's going to hit you, but it won't hit you like it will other people. And I remember very clearly that he kind of gave me the roadmap to what was going on at the time. You know, right. so, but, yeah. um, but anyway, yeah, it was pretty intense for sure. So, um, so let's get to, let's, there's so many things on paper that you do. So I want to get to the essence of what you do. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of grade school kids, third graders, it's career day. And one of the kids is curious and says, Hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? That's a great question. And I have a 10 year old grandson, so I can, I can sort of relate to that. Oh Yeah. I would say I help people figure out what their natural gifts and talents are, what they love to do, what they're naturally good at. I help them develop those so they have exponential success so that someday they can make a living doing what they love. When did this become, like, I hear about so many coaches and so many people that are helping others get to that point. When did this happen? When did you think this is what I want to do? You know, so I spent, um, I sort of landed in HR by accident. And um, so I spent most of my career in human resources. And the first half of my career, I was, I grew up on the training and development side. So I really thought I was pretty good at it and, you know, put people in a classroom with me and give me the worst leader or the worst communicator. And by golly, I'm going to figure it out and, and make them great. And then I spent the second half of my career realizing that, you know, trying to teach the pig to sing frustrates the pig and is irritating to you as well. Yeah. Um, so, so really focusing at that point on studying positive psychology and understanding that you know, all of us are so gifted with natural talents. And if we lean into that and we develop those strengths, we're going to see exponential versus marginal success. And you see that in sports and you see that in music, as you know, you can hear it, right? But in business, it's it's harder sometimes to identify. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I found that from a human resources perspective, that people were chasing title or they were chasing money or they were they were thinking that the only way to improve was to go up the proverbial corporate ladder, which may not have been the best thing for them. And even if they reach that next level of 
quote unquote success, they're miserable. And so it was, it was then seeing people really, when they were working in their sweet spot, how successful they were, how well they performed, how much it meant to the organization and how happy they were doing it. I thought, you know what, we should all live in a world where we get to do what we love. Yeah. Yeah. What did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? I wanted to retire Barbara Walters. Okay. Yes. I, uh, I have a broadcasting and film degree and um, worked there very minimally. I worked in, um, in radio at the little radio station in Warrensburg for yeah. a brief day. Uh, Warrensburg, Missouri. But um, yeah, I wanted to retire Barbara Walters. So I guess I'm getting a, a shot at it late in life, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like that's what happened to me too. I got into sports radio and got into sports broadcasting, hoping to be at ESPN, being on the set of Sports Center, And, you know, things happen. You you figure right. things out, things get diverted. So it's all good. So talk to me a little bit about where you were born and raised and how these seeds got into you to want to get into broadcasting and coaching and helping people. How did all of that grow in and evolve into who you are today? Yeah, so um, I, I bounced back and forth between Southern California and mid-Missouri. So um, born in Jefferson City, uh, not too far from, from you in Kansas City. And my parents moved to Southern California, Orange County area um, before I was a year old. Lived there until I was um, approaching middle school. My mom had remarried an Oklahoma boy and um, they wanted to get back to um, a more simple life. So we moved to Russellville, Missouri, a town of about 500. And um, you can imagine the culture shock going from Orange <laughs> County to Russellville, Missouri. Oh, I have forgiven them. But um, <laughs> then, yeah, and I think there was a pony involved as part of my relocation package. So oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So Should middle have been. School, well, right, exactly. Yeah. So middle school, high school, um, I went to University of Central Missouri or used, um, it was CMSU at the time. Yeah. And as with a broadcasting and film degree. So as soon as I finished that, I really wanted to get back to Southern California and spent more of my adult life there. Um, as I mentioned, fell into human resources. But what I, I, I loved business. I loved everything about leading people, budgeting, you know, kind of some of the geeky side of, of business as well. I loved strategy. But what I learned early on is that my communications background was really instrumental to being an effective leader. And um, I had a gift for teaching and, um, and educating. And I, and I thought, how do I put all of these tools together and use my gifts and talents to help others? And, and I had really great mentors early on. And for me, at this stage of my life, it's really about how do I give back and shine a light, particularly for women? Because, um, you know, women are conditioned to put their head down and work hard and that good things will come. And in the meantime, our wonderful, talented male counterparts are looking up and looking forward and, and driving, you know, past us. Right. Because we're kind of taking care of everybody else. And yeah. so... Um, for me, it's really about now, it's really about giving back and helping women in particular to be more intentional about their career growth and um, make time for themselves, make themselves part of the priority list. Yeah. And it's it's such an ever expanding field. I mean, this never used to be a thing. And now it's like people are really reaching out to tap into it, which is so good because for so long, I think people just didn't know what they were meant to be doing. It's not that they didn't want to do anything, but if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing and what your talent is, man, that's hard. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and we get promoted, you know, so often companies are still in the old school mindset of if you're a great nurse, we promote you to a nurse manager. If you're a great salesperson, we promote you to a sales leader. You know, the reality is some of the best salespeople in the world really don't have a desire to be leaders. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, you know, they love the hunt. They they love the, the the essence of being in sales and being behind the scenes and coaching and managing and developing others is not necessarily what fills their cup. So really understanding that and not chasing sort of that, again, that proverbial ladder that is often set in front of us instead of looking at what, how do I think about that as a lattice? Yeah, yeah. So you had mentioned Barbara Walters, but who's been a hero and inspiration for you in your life? Ooh, so um, 
My mom is probably the person that I would, and that's, um, I'm sure a lot of people choose their parents if they're, if they're lucky. Um, my mom was 17 when she got pregnant with me. My dad was 19, so they were young and, um, she got her GED. She went back to school at 40 to get her undergrad and has owned, bought and, you know, owned and sold a number of different businesses. She was, she was in, um, she had a, a salon for a while. Then she had a travel agency for a while. And I, I sort of looked at her and thought, well, she can really have it all. You can, you can have a business and have a career and raise children and um, it's possible. And so uh, she was, she was, a, she is to continues to be a real inspiration to me. So if you can meet one person alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, interview them, however, however it would, it would parlay out, who would you love to meet and talk to? Oh gosh. Well, if they didn't have to be alive, <laughs> we can open the door up to everybody. Yeah. 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 Because I just missed the window. If you'd interviewed me a little a little while back, so Sandra Day O'Connor to me is somebody that I would love to have had the opportunity to meet and spend time with. I've been I've been researching her quite a bit, really since her passing. To be honest with you, um, I am just I'm just moved by the time that 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 she was doing the work that she was doing in politics her bipartisan approach, her relational approach. And for me, and, and this is part of my brand, um, she had this beautiful combination of femininity and um, courage and um, the ability to, to uh, take on world leaders in a very critical conversation. And, and for me, that, blend of being that business professional, that ability to compete intellectually at the board table while maintaining um, a level of femininity yeah. really yeah. moved me, especially, I mean, in the fifties and sixties, that's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So what is your drive? You know, we're talking about very high level people. What is your drive every day to wake up, to be the best you and to also help others? How, how does that work for you? Yeah, I think it's, so um, I spent 35 years in, in corporate America and um, had the um, opportunity, uh, we'll put it that way, last June to uh, make a really important decision. Um, I was separating with my organization and I basically at this point had the opportunity to either I have to go back into the corporate grind for another three to four or five years, or I can move on to my next. And um, we have a book coming out March 19th. That's our publication date, now near next. And if I could be opportunistic, zealoftheheel.com, Z-E-A-L of the H-E-E-L.com. -E -E you could pre-order and get a, a number of bonuses. Um, but at that point, I had been working through the book, through writing the book, I had been working on what would be my next three to five years from now. And being really intentional about what I wanted to do in my encore career. And for me, it was, I want to shine a light for other professional women. I want to use my encore career really to coach, develop, inspire women to be intentional, look up, look forward and start now. And um, so at that crossroads, when, when it was the option was either I needed to go find another corporate grind or I need to just fast forward and accelerate my next, um, I decided to go for it. So, you know, it's been all of six months. Um, it's going great, but I will say it, it really convicted me to our methodology about now and your next, because had I not been thinking about and planning and preparing myself, getting my yeah, coaching certification, starting the book, if I hadn't been doing those things, I would have not had options. I would have felt, you know, the only option was to rinse and repeat. Yeah. So in this new venture, this first six months, what's been your best success story? One that, that just stands out. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, probably the opportunity. I, I had the opportunity to speak at the CDC um, last month. And <clears throat> what's special about that is a couple of things. One is it was a former board member of the company that I was with, that I worked with for about a decade, um, 
who made the introduction. And so just the fact that we've got so many people in our corner and supporting us and the, and the importance of relationships and nurturing relationships, um, that's so critical. Did I do that? Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Thank you. Um, nurturing those relationships is so important. And so one, I, what was special is the fact that that was the introduction Two, it was just um, a privilege to speak at the CDC. I, we had about 100 people in person and 3,200 joined remotely around the world. And so for me, getting the message out to women around the world um was incredibly gratifying and and uh, definitely a highlight thus far. Yeah, absolutely. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20-year-old version of you and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained so far. What advice would you impart on that younger version of you? Oh, probably to trust your gut. Um, believe in yourself. You're, you're more capable than you give yourself credit for. Um, I think, I think a lot of us from time to time have imposter syndrome and I was for it up until recently, I was generally the only female and the youngest person, um, in the room for years, yeah. for decades of my career. And um, I think at 20 years old, that was incredibly intimidating. That was that was a little concerning that you walk in and you're not only the youngest, you know, in many cases, these folks were um, my parents' age, especially given how young my parents are. Um, but yeah, trust yourself. You're more capable and you've got this, you know, believe in yourself um, and look up this notion, this myth of put your head down, work hard and good things will happen to you. Look up and be intentional. Yeah. You know, I see, like, I can't believe how many rights have been taken away from women over the last three or four years. And, and, and how many things have been denigrated. I just don't understand what's going on. And when I hear you talking about the empowerment and looking forward and looking up, it, it, it just seems like this is really the time to shine because all of these women that you had mentioned, you know, Barbara Walters and, and Sandra Day O'Connor, I mean, they fought for all of these things and it's just like, they just went away. They just vanished. And, and how did that happen as we advanced in, in this timeline of being alive and evolving on this planet? Like what happened? I, right, Joe, I, I agree. And I'll tell you, I fear, I fear that the working hybrid and working from re working remote, which I'm a huge fan of, and I think it creates a lot of work-life balance for professional women in particular, I really have concern that we're going to see even a greater setback. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. There was a, there was a research conducted by Gartner, and 64% of leaders still believe that those that are in the office are more productive and are more likely to get higher raises than those that are working remotely. Couple that with the fact that more women and BIPOC individuals are choosing to work from home yeah. for a variety of reasons. When you put those two things together, if we don't begin to change that, that old outdated mindset of where productivity can happen and having a life and and work at the same time, um, I fear that we're going to see what little effort we've made in, in the diversity. I mean, we're still at a 17% wage gap between men and women, right? We still only have 10% of CEOs in Fortune 500 companies are women. Um, in, in 2024, that's, that's embarrassing. Yeah. It's crazy. It really is. So, you know, of all of these things that you've done and accomplished and evolved and become in your life, what are you the proudest of? My kids. I know that's, I know that's probably, um, that's probably a little Pollyanna, but, um, I have two incredibly amazing grown kids that are, um, both married. Uh, my daughter is also a musician and raising three kids. And so she's a stay at home mom with a lot of side hustle. 
Yeah. So yeah. she's got an entrepreneurial spirit that um, that I that I've only caught fire with late in life. Um, and my son is a uh, videographer and photographer, and so also very creative. And um, they're just both. You know, I feel like as a parent and especially as a working mom, always having been sort of the primary breadwinner, traveled a lot throughout my career, really struggled to balance both things. And for my kids to have turned out as such amazing human beings, um, that to me is my greatest success. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? That's a tough one. Um, I think that I am very passionate about things that I believe in, um, which starts with friends, family, and faith. I am extremely driven. I'm very loyal. And um, and I and I love to to pour time and energy into helping other people find their joy. That fills my cup. When I see somebody else really finding their stride, really finding their rhythm, um, that's super gratifying. So I, I think that's probably um, that probably sums up who I think I am. So. What's the best thing about living in Jeff City? <laughs> My grandkids are five minutes away and yeah. um, they're two, three, and 10. So they're a handful. Yeah. Um, so far, I have not become the drop in babysitter. So also good. Yeah. Um, and my mom and my stepfather are eight minutes away. So family has been amazing. Um, great friends. I love the small town. You know, I I lived most of my life in in big cities and manage the commutes and all the things. But there's something really um, gratifying about going into a restaurant. And they don't know me yet, but everybody knows either my daughter, my son-in-law, or my folks, right? Yeah. So I think that's very quaint. I, I'm really enjoying that. It's only been for six months, so we'll sure. see how, ask me, ask me in a year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So if anyone wants to pick up the book, hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where can they go? Yeah, so we're on all the socials, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, um, let's see, YouTube, um, all of those are zeal of the heel. So it's Z-E-A-L of the H-E-E-L, like the shoe. Um, and then our website is zealoftheheel.com. And if uh, folks are interested in the book, which is coming out, as I mentioned, March 19th, um, we have a bundle, which includes a master class that includes access to our private network on LinkedIn, a couple other goodies, um, just for the book price of $28. And so they can get that at zealofthefield.com as well. And um, that's a great place to reach out to us for executive coaching, public speaking. Um, yeah, we'd love to work with, uh, with women that are, that are ready to make 2024 their year. Absolutely. Cynthia, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for your energy, your story. Best of luck with everything. Have a great 2024. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure. Take care. Thank you.